begin our service remembering Sandy as we look into the book of Psalms for comfort. There it is written, Esai el heharim, me ayin yavo ezri, ezri me imadonai o seshamayim va'aretz. I lift up my eyes to the mountains, what is the source of my help? My help comes from the Eternal, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way, your protector will not slumber. Behold the protector of Israel, neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian, God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm and protect your being. Adonai yishmor tzeitecha uvoecha me'ata ve'ad olam. May the Eternal guard your going and your coming, now and forevermore. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi lo echsar, b'naut desha yarbitzeni, amei menuchot yinachaleni, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Eternal forever. For Sandy, who knew the tradition of the woman of valor and who earned the words, we recite these words from Proverbs. A woman of valor who can find, her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and nothing shall he lack. She renders him good and not evil all the days of her life. She opens her hands to the needy and extends her hand to the poor. She is robed in strength and dignity and cheerfully faces whatever may come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. She tends to the affairs of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Her children come forward and bless her, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done superbly, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty short-lived, but a God-revering woman is much to be praised. Place before her the fruit of her hands, Wherever people gather, they speak her praise. Death has summoned our beloved Sandy Eisen. Our souls cry out unto you, O God. What are we? Are we the creatures of dust whose destiny is but to return to the dust from which we came? The ancient sage has taught us the spirit of the human being is the lamp of the eternal. Not even the darkness of death can extinguish the light which the eternal has kindled in the sanctuary of the human soul. Therefore, O oh God, we thank you in this solemn hour for that which was deathless in the life of our cherished Sandy and which is now revealed to us in all of its beauty. For her love that united us in life and which death cannot sever. For her companionship, which we shared along life's path, and which still continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of her heart and her mind, which brought us joy and happiness and now have become a precious heritage of the Spirit. For all these and more, we give you our praise. Grant unto us, O God, the strength of all the generations of our people who in the face of bereavement proclaimed, 
Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mevorach. God has given, God has taken away, still blessed be the name of God. The story of the Jewish people is told at the Passover Seder with just a few verses. Begins Arami Oved Avi. My father was a wandering Aramean. He went down to Egypt and sojourned there. He and just a handful of his family at first, but soon they became a great nation mighty and many. The tradition records the Egyptians abused and battered us in a cruel and sal savage slavery. We cried out to God, the God of our ancestors. God listened to our voices, saw our destitution, our trouble, our cruel plight. And God took us out of Egypt with a strong hand and the long arm, awesome and great, with signs and wonders and God brought us to this place and gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. So here I am, we are to declare, I've brought the first fruits of what I've grown on this ground that you gave me, O God. This is the whole story of the ancient people of Israel. And in so many ways, it is reflected in the life of the story of our beloved Sandy Eisen. Consider that her father, Israel Abraham Katz Hakohain was from Romania. Her mother, Celia, wandered in Poland. They made their way to Siberia, where Zahava, who would later be known as Sandy, was born. Then they continued their journey to Austria, where two and a half years later, Sima, or Sis, was born. And then finally, as the verse reminds us, with signs and miraculous wonders, God brought them to a land flowing with milk and honey, to Israel, where eight years later they completed their family with Tova. These wandering Jews found their way to a home in Jaffa, just a little north of Tel Aviv. Life in Israel in those early years, even before statehood in the 1940s, though difficult and arduous, was better than what was going on in Europe. The Katz family had escaped the cruelties that would befall Europe, and were content working in the land of our ancestors. Sis remembers stories of how she and Sandy would carry ice blocks for their ice box long distances up the hill, often dropping that big chunk of ice and needing to start the journey all over again. But it was this kind of courage and fortitude that would serve them both well as they continued their journey. Nonetheless, it was a joy of life in Israel, a time of education, until, that is, Israel, Sandy's father, realized that his eldest daughter was about to be drafted into the Israel Defense Force. They caught the last ship to America just before Sandy would turn 16 and would arrive on dry shore again in America on December 9th, 1960. There are two forces that work in Jewish history. The one is the push factor, the experience of our ancestors as they were pushed out of the country to escape persecution all throughout our many generations. That's reflected in the wandering of our people from country to country looking for a quiet home, the yearning for a secure homeland to call their own. That eventually leads to the establishment of Medinat Yisrael, to the state of Israel. The Katz family endured those push experiences from country to country. But how fortunate that they were able to make their way to the salvation offered by Palestine at that time by Israel. The other force in history is the pull factor. In this case, the draw to the golden Medina, which was America. Golden because it was thought that the streets here were paved with gold. But Sandy's parents were not naive. 
They knew that the $10 per person that they were officially allowed to bring with them would not be enough. Instead, Sandy's mother took with her to America an iron that would certainly not work on the currency here. But nonetheless, it carried the family treasure. Cleverly, she had unscrewed the panel and stuffed it with their entire savings of about $600 that would help tide them over until they could find their way in their new homeland. But that would not be all the money that they'd have when they landed in America. Zahava, Sandy, who was on the boat across the ocean, um, decided, who was Zahava on the boat across the ocean, decided to change her name to Sandy. She chose that name because the last movie that she saw in Israel was A Summer Place with Sandra D. She, was, she became a self-trained hairdresser on that ship. She did people's hair and made a few extra dollars. And she was stunningly beautiful and intuitive. So when the captain wanted her to cut his hair, she knew better. <laughs> the family who sponsored their papers to come to America lived here in Cleveland. So the family quickly made their way to the freezing winters here the likes of which the girls had never known. They were each other's best friends, though, those three girls growing up. And that was especially true of Sis and of her husband, Bruce, who even had to get married on Sandy's birthday, May 14th, as a gift to Sandy. These three women quickly acculturated themselves into the language that they'd never heard by watching American television and within just a few short months, Sandy was ready to start beauty school. She was her best advertisement of her skills, always stunningly presenting herself. That is, until having dyed her hair blonde, she entered a chlorinated swimming pool and her hair turned green. Sandy liked to go dancing, too. On a fateful night, she attended a dance at the local JCC and caught the attention of a man who had an eye for beautiful things. The lovely 19-year-old Israeli girl with some attitude was introduced to the 25-year-old man who was a newy to the place, hi hiding behind his dark sunglasses for protection and to stand out a bit too. There was great music playing and they would enjoy dancing together for the rest of the evening. Six weeks later, Jerry asked Sandy to marry him. After Jerry's work for Zara's took them to Atlanta and then to Miami where they started their family. They started their family with hope. Not surprisingly, they would name their daughter Hope Tikva. The couple later settled in Cleveland and they continued to build their lives here, welcoming Lisa and then Kelly. Now, some of you know that Sandy would bet on most things. And even though friends may have put a bet on how long their relationship would last, Sandy and Jerry shared so many of the same core values and a deep respect and admiration for each other that their young love would lead to 51 years of sharing their lives, building a family, working hard, and caring for each other as the blessing goes in sickness and in health. But one thing that they just never got in sync with was Sandy's love for traveling. Considering all the countries that she had seen in her younger years, when she wanted to open a travel agency, she enlisted the help of her best friend and sister. Sis and Sandy became inseparable. Here Sandy was with all these free tickets and opportunities but Jerry had a strong aversion to flying and turned his motor home from a hobby into a necessity so that they could make their way around the country, and especially when they wanted to see Alaska. And speaking of hobbies, Sandy had a few also. Sandy developed that quintessential American hobby of a love of sports. You might say she became a sports fanatic, far surpassing the enthusiasm of her husband's love of the games. And where she sought beauty, where he sought beauty through a camera lens, Sandy created it with her skillful hands, carefully darting through needlepoints that grace so many of your homes. 
She also enjoyed playing Maj, but it had to be for money to make it interesting. <laughs> and don't you dare disrupt her bingo game, as Hope found out, even if you're bleeding and might need stitches. Is it Kelly, Kelly found out. That was, sounds more like it. <laughs> she dropped you at the door of the emergency room so that she could get back to her game, I understand. And she had her bowling league that had offered her time with the bowling ladies. She was engaging and friendly, and many people were easily drawn to her in whatever her activity was or wherever she was. And that was true for people of all ages. Sandy had warm memories of her growing up as one of three girls, and she found great comfort and delight in having her own three girls. The first hope, you and your mother shared such a closeness that comes from being the first and the easiest of the three girls. She gave you many responsibilities as she was, as she was building her career, and she trusted you to take care of the family as she suffered through kidney stones and complications for several years. You took on some of her special qualities of easily engaging people, and as a nurse, that has been a skill that one cannot train for in school. You were the one she depended on to translate American culture and to translate health issues, especially when your father had a stroke and her lung cancer came to haunt their later years. And then there was Lisa, as we say, oi, Lisa. <laughs> you like to figure things out, and you quickly figured out how to push every limit. That, was, that you and your mom had a strained relationship at times was an understatement, I understand. She would wish on you, you should only have a daughter like you, as the two of you would rough and tumble it out even. But when the going got rough for your mom, you were the fulfillment of her words in every positive dream she could have had. You should only have a daughter like you. Opening your home to her these last two years was more than a reprochement. Your coming together in heart and mind helped to heal her broken heart after your father's passing in August of 2017. And what a send off you made for her with her last big outing out being a special dinner and theater with the two of you going out to see Hamilton. She loved musicals and this one did not disappoint. And Kelly, you worried your mom a lot too. You worried her for a while and then you went to work with her and through thick and thin she was always there to remind you she loved you to the moon and back and she loved you more. She never lost faith in you, and when she needed you, you would be there for her too. And each of you three girls brought into Sandy's life your partners who became her supports and her strengths. For Scott, there was that sense that Sandy could depend on you for anything, especially sound advice and guidance. She knew she could count on you to take care of this Cleveland contingent, the whole brew of her family, whether she was near or far. For Mike Pedro, she was grateful for your taking charge. You moved her out of Florida and into a renovated, what was a half bath that you turned into an addition of an in-law suite, opening your home and your heart to welcome her these last two years. And Brett, if something didn't work right, you were right there to fix it for Sandy and make it better for her. Sandy felt confident that the three of you men were wonderful compliments for her daughters, and she would entrust you with her greatest treasures. And those great treasures also included her grandchildren. For Drew, Ma, as you named her, took, on some, took you on some wonderful adventures. You remember those two and a half weeks that you spent with her in Israel after your bar mitzvah as a time of joy and fun and getting to know her in a very special way, meeting family and seeing the sights together. What a bonding event that would solidify the way you always saw her as a second mother to you. And later on, when she needed help during those difficult years for her and for Jerry in Florida, 
You dropped everything to repay the kindness of taking care of them. Samantha, you enjoy telling your grandmother about your stories, and more importantly, hearing the stories of those early years, sharing the tales of every picture in her album. You are a true photographer's daughter and granddaughter. You know that every picture has a story, has a big story to tell of one's life. And the hope of being in, in pictures at your bat mitzvah and seeing you become a bat mitzvah was one of the things that kept her going strong this last year. At your reception, she held court with all of your mom's friends who enthusiastically came to say hello to her and to recollect those images of her of when they were, teenage, when they were teenagers and she welcomed them into her home and made them feel at home always. For Ethan and Danica, that time when your grandmother rescued you from being grounded in the hotel at Disney World was something that really opened up your eyes to the limits of, how, of your mother's patience. But you also got to enjoy some special extra time with your grandparents visiting them in Florida. She was a great joy to you and you to her as she got to watch you growing up intimately over these last couple years. Little things that you would do for her, like vacuuming her room, might be the kinds of things that went unnoticed, but she certainly took great pride and joy in you. And for Audie, there were the special visits and the telephone calls that created caring memories of your grandmother she adored each of you, was so proud of each of you, and she smothered you with kisses that left her bright pink lipstick all over your cheeks to prove it. She was your touchstone. She was your touchstone to Jewish life and the way it could be lived with grace and gratitude. What makes Sandy's story such an integral part of the story of the Jewish people is not only how she liked to identify the Jewish people wherever you went at every outing and event, but more so how she brought you all into the essence of what it means to be a Jewish family. It's the story of traditions like the delicious brisket and chicken soup she would make for the holidays. It's knowing that everyone she sent on a trip to Israel had to bring her special soup mix back or that because of her years in Israel, she was addicted to garinim, to those sunflower seeds that she'd spit out. The Yiddish and the Hebrew expressions she used are things that permeate your minds. They'll be there for you to hear, to hear in her voice in your own heads. Even as she used to have selective hearing for what she wanted to hear from each of you. As the biblical story reminds us, it was God's strong arm that took us out of Egypt, out of Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is not just a physical country, but it's a metaphysical concept. It means a place of narrowness, of constriction, and of oppression. It's as if in this season of moving from affliction to liberation, God offered Sandy a way out of the difficult health struggles that she had had for months. How blessed she was to see the fruits of her labors growing up and thriving again. As she laid them before God, as our passage of Torah reminds us, as her offering, as her offering for the next generation to continue her legacy. As we come to this moment of parting, the tradition remi remains our guide. As we hear the words of our sages pronounced, Zichrona Livracha. As you were Sandy's blessing, may Sandy's memory be your blessing, continuing to guide you and inspire you as a family to stay strong and united together, to stay strong in your Jewish heritage and in the heritage that she treasured as a family. Amen. Each of you has precious memories of Sandy, of your mom, your sister, your loved one your friend. We take a moment now as we silently remember her and the strong voice that she will remain in our heads.
יהיו לרצון ימרי פי, והגיון ליבי לפניך אדוני צורי וגואלי. May not only the words that we speak, but even our most precious and private meditations and memories be acceptable to you, our God, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. We ask God to accept Sandy's soul with the words of El Malay. Please rise. El Malay Rachamim, Shochein Bam Romim. Hamse Menucha Nechona Tachat Kanfeha Shechina, Lenishmat Zahava Bat Yisrael Avram Hakohen. Bechaya Tzivia, Shel Halcha Olama, Baal Harachamim Yastireha Besetr Kanafav Olamim, Bitzror Bitzror Hachaim et Nishmata, Adonai Hu Nachalata, Betanuach Beshalom al Mishkava, Benomar Amen. O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest unto the soul of our departed Sandy Eisen. Zahava, daughter of Yisrael Avraham the Kohen, and of Chaya Sivia, who has departed from this world. God of mercy, bring her into your presence, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be thou her possession, and may her repose always be unto peace. Amen. You may be seated. Our service continues at the Lincoln Cemetery in Parma, and then the family will return back to Lisa and Mike's home, which is 37427 Hunter's Ridge Road in Solon. They will be observing Shiva after the interment until 4 o'clock today, and then this evening again from 6 to 9, Tuesday and Wednesday similarly from 1 to 4 and from 6 to 9. Friends who wish may contribute to the American Cancer Society.